Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for Stern Tech Workstations. We're back and we're getting ready to reattach this uh, uh, Simon and Patrick bolt-on neck. So there's a couple of things I wanted to point out about this particular type of neck-to-body joint and things that you need to watch out for. First of all, if you do your job right, that's what the soundboard should look like after you remove that fingerboard extension. The underside of the fingerboard, same thing. I've seen some pretty horrific stuff online where you know half the soundboard was still attached to the uh, underside of the fingerboard when the neck was removed. This is what you're after. Nice clean release, no lumber, right on the glue line. Like a lot of these bolt-on necks, they have two threaded rods, or in this case two threaded bolts to go through the head block and pull the heel in tight. Those holes are drilled oversized, purposely, so that there's enough movement to sort of correct the heel and the lay of the neck unobstructed when you go to sort of bolt it back into place. This looseness here allows you to align everything up. With it. Unlike a real dovetail joint that requires quite a bit more skill, that's another story completely. So these are the glue scoop-up sticks that I prepare in advance. I know I have shown this in previous videos, but I'm going to show you again because this is something that's uh, important for you to understand. Okay, for the sake of my students and subscribers, I'm going to make up our little call. I'll show you how I make this up. This is for gluing this fingerboard extension on. That's what I start with. So while this block is still square, I'm going to mark the placement of the frets. This will make more sense in a second when I show you the next move. We'll chase those lines across like so. We're going to cut on either side of each line all the way across. So now that we've chiseled out those relief cuts, now we can cut the taper of the fingerboard. Even though I've done this job, I still go through this process. It's 99% preparation and 1% perspiration. I've got all my cloths lined up. I've got that gluing call that we just made up. We have the glue wipe-up sticks made up. I'll do another dry run before I spread that glue. Two-sided tape, chunk of hockey puck, we're ready. So our dry run is done. Got a hockey puck up against the head brace so that uh, the clamp doesn't bruise the spruce head brace. And you can see that we are getting a little bit more squeeze out of that bottom end. The end of the fingerboard there, that little bit of extra squeeze. Okay, so we got our damp cloth. Not sopping wet, just damp. And we're going to wipe up whatever's left of that glue squeeze. So, as I've said in so many other videos, if you do your job right, you cover your tracks, it should look like the guitar's never been touched. So we got perfect contact all the way along here, 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 and all the way along the end of the fingerboard. And there you have it, another use for hockey bucks. I have to admit, I was a bit bummed out when Winnipeg got taken out, and I thought, well, listen, the Golden Knights, man, first year, let's see this happen. And then they lost to Washington. I got to say that uh, those Twitter pictures of... Uh, Ovechkin hugging that Stanley Cup like a teddy bear passed out. Uh, that got to me. Those guys deserved it. It was a great series. Anyway, so there you go. Hockey Puck Blue 3 and his guitar is resurrected. Cheers. Cheers.